Greetings, brethren. Today, I think I'll go back to the basics and teach about uh, this doctrine that uh, in salvation, we are imputed righteousness when we are saved, that the righteousness of Christ is imputed unto the believer or charged to the believer, that we are counted righteous or attributed the righteousness of God. Because we have teachers like here, uh, like Watchman D here, that pervert this truth. Now, in salvation, we have fallen short. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Of ourselves, we are, we are not righteous. We have nothing to offer God that would uh, be uh, good enough for God because we've fallen short of his standard. And we are not, uh, we don't have any righteousness of ourselves to offer it because no one is righteous. Not as righteous. No, not one. And obviously it's not, also it's not by works of what anything we have done. As it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, by grace ye are saved, through faith, not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, least any man should boast. So it's nothing of ourselves. It's not no kind of works that we do. And also it's not any works of the law. Titus 3, 5. It's not, uh, it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But it's uh, by the grace and mercy that he has saved us. So... I want to uh, teach on this very basic truth that uh, we are not righteous. We have nothing to offer God, not even works of law, not even obeying the, the, the works of the law or any type of um, commandments that God uh, states in his word. It's not by our obedience. Our obedience is not good enough. Um, so, um, so I'm I'm going to use um, Watchman D's uh, video here as an illustration. I don't think I'm going to go through that part that uh, is this um, video here, but uh, I'm just going to use an example that there's people out there that's perverting this uh, imputation of righteousness that uh, we have done so uh, that uh, that have I mean that this that we are charged with this righteousness righteousness of Christ when we are saved so let's watch what is three nine and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith uh, so they'll look at this and they'll say, well, see, it's not our righteousness. We don't have to obey Jesus Christ. It's by faith alone, it's Christ alone, it's grace alone. Uh, go ahead and send all you want. You'll end up in heaven because it's not my righteousness that gets me there. It's a righteousness. I've been imputed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ so that when God looks down on me, he doesn't see me fornicating and getting drunk and using drugs and watching pornography or whatnot. He just sees Jesus. He just sees Jesus, and they often come right here to Philippians 3 9 and they'll quote part of this passage most of the time uh, to justify a life of willful sin. Acts 7 48, and that's saying the prophet Amen. Amen. But do you know, they're in those buildings today, Randall. Uh, and fun, hey, that building fun, he's got to keep touch that next door is in uh, Tahoe, whatever he's driving. That's what's going on. It's not an awe. Uh, buildings that they call churches in our here and figure that this passage here uh, is fine. why would they think that this passage here justifies a life of willful sin well like i just said they think they're imputed with the righteousness of christ you see they'll read a part of a verse and then they will tell you a story and then they'll go somewhere else in the bible they'll go to maybe romans 4 or something and they'll lift this out uh or if Abraham were justified well, uh, by works, yes, we're of the glory, but not for God. And, ah, right there, it's not by works. 
Therefore, we can sin. It's not about us. It's just all about Jesus. We can sin all we want. We'll still go into heaven because it's not by our righteousness that we enter in. Well, let's investigate that a little bit as we have so many times for this show. But this one in particular gets me quite, quite often. So, as usual, what these false graces like to do, they like to take a, uh, a passage of scripture, a verse, or two, or maybe part of a verse, uh, which is the case usually for this, which we're partially quoting. And uh, they like to take a passage that Paul is using in reference to the law of Moses, uh, and they like to present it to you in such a way as to give the illusion that Paul is exhibiting from obeying Jesus Christ. But that's not at all what's going on here. We have two things going on here. This is not about us Christians being exempt from obeying Jesus. Okay? This is about righteousness not being of the law of Moses, which is what's in the context, as we're going to read in a second. But this is about righteousness not coming by the law in and of itself, in your ability to do the law, in your righteousness, in and of yourself, apart okay apart from faith in christ which is exactly what it says right here okay he founded him not having great old righteousness which is of the law that's one thing okay but that which is through the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith okay so uh we're not talking about a christian being in obedience uh that that's not necessary here. Uh, no, we're talking about we are not justified by our words in and of ourselves apart from Jesus Christ. In other words, if you think that you're going to enter heaven based on your own righteousness from the moment that you came into life to the moment that you died, well, then you're sorely mistaken. And on judgment day, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad go at it because that changed. Although he doesn't say, okay, um, although he doesn't say that uh, we must do the works of the law, that the law of, of Moses saves us, we are part, we aren't under the, the law of Moses, that came by Moses. But he says that though we must obey Jesus after salvation, uh, after we profess Christ, in order to that we, in order to maintain their salvation, that uh, righteousness is uh, living right. It, it pertains that uh, Jesus does not give us a righteousness upon salvation, but we are righteous when we live righteous. So we, our salvation is uh, contingent upon faith in Jesus Christ and uh, living in obedience, living in righteousness. So that, that's a perversion in and in of itself. That he, he also he trips off. You think that our own righteousness, that from the moment we are born, so he thinks like that we trying to live right or something like that apart from God's standard, you know, that's the issue. No, whatever we see as right is not, does not count as righteousness. And we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> He's totally missing the point. Righteousness is according to God's standard, not main standard. What we think is right is doesn't have nothing to do is not uh, being argued against anywhere in the scripture. It's the, the the works of the law, the works of righteousness. That is what's being argued throughout the scriptures. Because what we see as right is not the, what counts as righteousness. So <laughs> he's totally missing the point up there. He does not see this, the, the whole, all, the whole context unless he ignores it, wants to teach what he wants to teach. So what we see is right 
does not count as righteousness whatsoever. It's not argued against. What's argued against is uh, the law of God, the standards of righteousness that God has, which is contained in the works of the law. So, so in Titus 3, it says, but after the kindness and love of God, of, of God, the love of God, our Savior, towards men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which is the works of the law to attain right, this, to, to, as righteous living, righteous living, righteous works, good works, which we have done, anything that we have done, the works of righteousness or the works of the law or any which anything we have done, but according to his mercy, yes, saints, according to his mercy, what is that? His mercy is grace, justified, being justified by his grace, according to his mercy, being justified by grace. By grace, you are saved through faith. So by his grace, the merit of favor to offer the gift of salvation. And we who our response is faith, not works of righteousness, the works of law, which we have done, for, you know, the things that we do, but according to his mercy, I have saved us. By his grace. And in the it's through the Holy Spirit. Or in in the this is the manner that we are born again. Being born of God, born of the Spirit. It's by watching the regeneration, regeneration. We are regenerated by the Holy, Holy Spirit cleansing us, cleansing the inner man, the spirit and rejuvenating or regenerating renewing of the Holy Spirit, which we, which he shed us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace. So what's being argued against is by his grace, but not works of righteousness, works of law, or the things that we have done but it's through Jesus' faith in Jesus Christ, justified by his grace, his mercy. By his mercy, nothing that we can attain. We should be, that we should be made heirs according to hope of eternal life. So justified by his grace that we obtain this, the hope of eternal life, that we gain eternal life through. This is a faithful saying that these things I, that, that thou affirm constantly that they which are believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. But it's not good, see, good works, that we maintain good works after salvation. Yes, we should. We are commanded, to, but not, doesn't, it's not contingent on our salvation because it's not by works of righteousness or good works, but it's according to his mercy. His grace. But we'd be careful to maintain good works after salvation. Which these things are good and profitable to men. This benefits men, other people. And he, he kind of, he, I don't know what kind of idea that he came up with. That from this kind of thing that we, that our righteousness, the things that we think we're doing, um, what we think is right, is being argued against. Because what we see as, as right is not righteousness. As I have 521, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prove it in their own sight. Proverbs 21, 2. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord, the Lord pondereth the heart. 
So every way of man, every, uh, the, the ways that people uh, think is right, is right in their own eyes. But it's not the judgment, it's not man's judgment what what is right, but it's the Lord's judgment. It's the Lord's standards. It's not man's standards. It's the Lord's standards that judge judges the hearts. So what? Yes, we we there's Christ. Uh, there's commandments that Jesus has, to, you know, commanded us, but. Yes, we have to obey in our walk, walk with Christ, but the, we have, he thinks that obeying the gospel is mean obeying what the works that Christ has demanded us. No, firstly, obeying the gospel is believing on the record that God gave of his son. Uh, in uh, First John chapter 5. That is being the gospel. Believing in the record that the Father gave of the Son. Who, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but those who do not have the Son don't have eternal life. Those who do not believe the, the record that God, the Father gave of the Son does not have eternal life. And the commandments that Jesus Christ gave, uh, commanded us is, is not the Mosaic law and it's not any type of uh, law but he, uh, he has um, condensed the law into two I mean he, he does not destroy the law but it's contingent on loving God love thy Thy Lord, thy God, and love the Lord, uh, love, excuse me, love the Lord thy God, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments, all the all the words of the, the, the law and the prophets hang upon these two, two words, or two commandments. Love is fulfillment of the law. <clears throat> Matthew 20, uh, 22, 36 to 40. Master, which is the greatest, great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Love, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Even uh, the epistles of Paul and the epistle to the Romans reiterates the, these two commandments. Romans 13, 8 to 10. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not have commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, or thou shalt not lie. Um, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the law. law. So, if you have love for God and love for neighbor, that is what contingent. That's what's uh, fulfilling the law. If you love God, you would worship him only. You do not worship idols. Do not take him, his name in vain. And if you love your neighbor, you will not steal. You will not kill. You will not con uh, uh, commit adultery. And so on. But we, I don't want to get, uh, don't take me, take take me it's the wrong way. We are not condemned by the, the Ten Commandments, but it is it's still a moral guide, a guideline. But we fulfill those by loving God and loving our neighbor. 
because um, and we are enabled to fulfill these two commandments through the Holy Spirit, because the fruits of the Holy Spirit that produces, this is what enables us. We are not doing this, that, that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit within in us, the Holy Spirit within us is producing this love that may enable him to love God, that we would obey God in our walk and to love our neighbor, help our neighbor when he is in need, feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Um, because through the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So this long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Because we are saved, that when we are saved, um, the, the Holy Spirit comes upon us to, to um, make us spiritual alive, to, that we that causes us our spiritual man, our inner man, to uh, it causes the rebirth to be born again, born of God of the Spirit. And we are enabled to love God and love our neighbor through the Spirit, because the fruit of the Spirit is love. So that's what it means to obey Jesus, uh, to obey Jesus' commandments. It's to love. And if we love, but in, in the and the, what's produced out of it is um serving God, worshiping God, and uh, not dishonoring God and not dishonoring your neighbor. But the commandment is contingent upon love and out of love produces the action. So in Philippians three, he says, well, you know, we have no power to do the law, the law of God, apart from faith in Jesus Christ. After we're saved, we can, we are able to do, to do the law of God and that we should obey Jesus Christ. That is to, to, to maintain our salvation. But that, that's not what Paul here was talking about. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord, to write the same things, not previous, but for you, to, it is safe. We were dogs. We were aware of evil doers, uh, evil workers. We were of concision. For we are the, okay, there's duty hires that were pressuring the new, the new uh, Christians in faith to keep the circumcision. But he reassures us the circumcision that we keep is not of the flesh or of the, the male member. <laughs> but the, we, that is not the true circumcision. The true circumcision is in the spirit as a circumcision of the heart, which means that it's, it's the, it's the, um, Renewing that the Holy Spirit renews our heart, renewing our spirit, regenerate. For we are the circumcision, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, not of the flesh, not of the law, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. So not confident in the flesh. He has no time in the flesh that the, that the works of the law or being, obeying certain practices, he have no confidence. He has confidence in, in the spirit of God. Though I might have confidence in my flesh, if any other man thinketh, though I might have confidence in the flesh, he did have confidence in the flesh because he is Pharisee, Pharisees, so is the law. So, if any man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, but I more. I was trusted in the flesh evermore because I was um, 
Pharisee of Pharisees, zealous of keeping the law. Circumcised on the eighth day, he was circumcised. The apostle Paul was circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law at Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting church, touching, touching the righteous, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted for loss. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for ecstasy of the knowledge of Christ, Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. I do count them but done. I count them as done that I may win Christ. His zealousness of keeping the law, his works of law, being circumcised, obeying uh, certain practices, doing the works of law, trying to obtain righteousness through his flesh. He count all things, all things that he, being that he was a Pharisee, as done. And he counts that he persecuted the church as done. Uh, he he uh, he resents persecuting the church. And he says, "That may way in Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness. The righteousness does not come from me, which is attained it, of the law. The law, the works of righteousness." There's no other righteous. What we see is right, right is not righteousness. Our standard is not God's standard. Being righteous is doing the law, the works of the law. So not having, he does did not, uh, being, he's not being saved of his own righteousness, what he has done through the law. Uh, his own righteousness and the righteous works of the law. But, and he contrasts that having his own righteous works to the righteousness as found in Jesus. So not works of my own, which is works of the law, but that is which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous which is of God by faith. So the righteousness is the righteousness of God, not the righteousness of us that is tamed through faith. He wants to tell you, well, yeah, we can uh, be righteous, righteous living, but we can't do it apart from faith. So faith and living righteous. He's not... And uh, Watchman D is like, well, it's not uh, the works of himself, but it's the righteous living after we are saved. No, it's not. It's the righteousness of God that comes from God, not any righteousness that we are doing. But it's the righteousness of God that we obtain by faith. He perverts that scripture. It's the righteousness of God, not of us. It's the righteousness of God, which we attain by faith. <laughs> he perverts it. Um, o foolish Galatians 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth or the gospel, before whose eyes Jesus Christ have dimly set forth crucified among you? This only what I learn of you, receive the, ye the spirit by the works of law or by the hearing of faith. So they're trying to, get, they're falling back into Judaism, trying to, falling back into the law, trying to obtain uh, righteousness, uh, works of, obtain it by the works of righteousness. But he's saying, did you attain by the works of righteousness or did you attain the spirit, the Holy Spirit? Or salvation by the hearing of faith or the hearing hearing of the gospel putting faith in the gospel are you so foolish having begun in spirit 
So we gun in the spirit, being saved, but falling back into thinking we have to do works of law. Are you now made perfect by the flesh by doing the works of the law? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the Spirit, worketh miracles among you. Doeth he by the works of law or by the hearing of faith? So there's miracles. The miracles that uh, and the minister, he that ministered you to you the Spirit. Does he does his miracles by the works of law, but by faith, by faith. Even as Abraham believed God, it was counted him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that which are of faith, the same is children of Abraham. So it's um, this promise, the children of Abraham. It's not that the physical stock of Abraham, the physical descendants, but we are the children of God or obtain this promise that made to uh, Abraham by faith. And the scripture foreseen God would justify the evening through faith preached before the gospel unto Abram saying, in thee all nations be blessed. So we obtain that promise that was made to Abraham that all nations be blessed through the seed of Abraham, which is by faith in Jesus Christ is being preached uh, by the gospel. The gospel is being believing in this in this seed, Jesus Christ. That's how we are blessed. That's how all, all nations be blessed. That's the promise of Abraham. We obtain the promise that was made to Abraham. So then that which are of faith are blessed with faithful in Abraham. For as many as are of the works of law are under the curse. For it's written, Cursed is everyone that could do not all, all things which are written in the book of law to do them. So if you offend the least of the commandments, you are cursed. You are not totally redeemed in your spirit that you are uh, to obligated to keep the law. So by no man is justified by the law in sight of God. It's evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of law. So the condemnation of the law being a curse for us, taken upon a punishment or the sacrifice, condemnation. The, the abolishing the, the animal sacrifice, the use of one final sacrifice. Written, cursed, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentile through Jesus Christ, that we receive the promise of the Spirit through faith, and not by the works of law. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be a man's coming, yet if it be confirmed, no man. Uh, DNA analyst or added there on too. So the, the the covenant of Abraham is not put aside. The promise they made to Abraham is not put aside. It's not a, uh, the law is not against the uh, the the faith is not against the promises that were made to Abraham. But we obtain the promises that uh, the covenant of Abraham is fulfilled in Christ. Now the Abraham and the seed were the promises made. See, we, we obtain this promise that we are blessed, that all nations are blessed through that seed, which is Jesus Christ. Not just God ahead of myself. He saith not to seeds as many, but as one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. So all nations are blessed, blessed by Abraham's seed. And I was fulfilled in Christ. And this I say that the covenant which was confirmed before God uh, was confirmed in Christ. The law, which was 430 years after, could not disannul that it made to make promise none effect. But the inheritance be of law, it's no more a promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. So if we inherit the, the promise of 
if the promise made to Abraham was inherited by the law, it's no more a promise. God gave it to Abraham by promise. So we obtain it, the promise, through faith. Wherefore, wherefore then served the law? It was added because of transgressions. The seed should come to whom the promise was made. It was ordained by the angels in the hand of the meteor. Now the meteor is not a meteor one, but God is one. There's a law against the promise of God. God forbid, for if there been a law that given which could give life, could have given life, fairly righteous would have been by law, the righteousness that eternally saves us cannot be attained by law. It is for their righteous living. But uh, but the scripture hath uh, contained concluded all is under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So the promise to us is given to us. The promise of Abraham is given to us by faith in Jesus Christ. But before faith came, we were kept under law, shut on to the faith which should uh, after be revealed. So wherefore was the, the schoolmaster the law was our schoolmaster bringing us on to Christ, that we might be just by, by faith. But after faith come, we are no longer our schoolmaster. For ye are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So, so we are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. We are no longer the law, kept under the law. We are no longer under condemnation. Jesus took a, a condemnation upon himself. So we'll, we'll skip forward to chapter, almost chapter four. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? For Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. So this justification is before God. Uh, the, the eternal justification was by faith. This righteousness was attained by faith. But the works, you're saying, if he was justified by works. In James 2, is saying that, that by works we are justified. Yes, to Abraham's works wrought with his faith, but he was not justified in an eternal sense, which is before God by his works. He was justified before men, meaning that we, he was righteous before men, living in a righteous, uh, his righteous living. So, for what say the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh, um, worketh is not is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. For those who work, it's not uh, it's not of grace, but it's trying to it's of debt or according to the debt of the of the law, trying to you know. Trying to live in obedience for the events that you did, trying to uh, work off, work off li living right for the offense of sin, but that's not record. That's record of debt, De indebted to the law. So, but to him that worketh not, but him that on, but believeth, but he that believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is down for righteousness. Even as David described the blessed of man of the man who God impute righteousness without works. <laughs> Where is this imputation that uh, Watchman D says? We uh, God does not impute righteousness. What do you have there? God blessed of the man that whom God imputes it. Righteousness without the works, saying, "Blessed are those iniquities are forgiven, 
whose sins are covered. Bless the man that whom the Lord will not impute sin. We're not charged with sin when we are uh, when we are saved. In when when we are in Jesus Christ, we are not imputed with sin or charged or strived with sin. We are strived with righteousness, which is without works or works of law. Without works and and without works of law. So. Cometh this blessing upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned when he was circum, uh, circum when he was in circumcision or uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but an uncircumcision. So he was counted righteous before he was circumcised. So, um, he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness of the, faith, of the faith which he yet being uncircumcised, that he might be father them that, that lead. Though he not be circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. So, he was counter righteous. Yet not not yet he wasn't he wasn't yet he wasn't yet circumcised, but his faith was counted to righteousness. But the sign of circumcision is the sign of the righteousness which he obtained by faith. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet been yet uncircumcised. For the promise that should be the heir of the world was not Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they were of the law, for they which are of law be heirs, faith may void, a promise may void, made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, where there where for where no law is, there's no transgression. So we aren't under the law. So there's no transgression. So there's no combination of the law. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end, a promise of the promise might be sure to all the seed. So the law worketh wrath, combination. So we are under law, so there's no transgression. No, we do not sin against the law. So therefore, it's of faith that might be by grace. So it's of faith, the faith of Je that we put in Jesus Christ. And we are tributed by, by his mercy, his grace, that we obtain this promise. That was promised to, to his seed, all the seed. As written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him, whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, called those things which are be not as they were. Who against hope believed in hope that he might believe, become the father of many nations, according to that which is spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet thinness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but through but strong faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that which he had promised. So he was fully persuaded of this promise. He was able to perform. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. So he was fully persuaded of this promise. Being fully persuaded is what imputed righteousness to him. 
Now it's for, not written for his sake alone, that was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised Jesus Christ, our Lord from the dead, who delivered for our offenses, that we raised again for our justification, and was again raised again for our justification. So he believed the promise, his faith, or his fully persuaded of this promise, was was the reason that righteousness was imputed or attributed, counted, that he was counted righteousness. This wasn't written for his sake only, but those that would this righteousness, the righteousness of God be imputed onto. It's those who are um, believe in Jesus Christ. So just as Abraham was imputed righteousness by faith, by being fully persuaded of the promise of God, we uh, we get uh, righteousness imputed onto us when we are fully persuaded in in Jesus Christ. So he, Washington Medea says, there's no imputation. We are not counter-righteous. After we, it, we are saved to uh, be, uh, that our sins would be taken away so we can be able to live righteously. And we have to live righteously to maintain our salvation. But he's going against scripture, just as Abraham believed God, believed, was fully persuaded in the promise, is written not for our, his sake, but for our sake, that we uh, understand uh, that uh, through faith, faith in Jesus Christ, that the righteousness of God is, is imputed unto us. So watch him, he says there's no imputation, but the scripture says otherwise. Romans 4 says otherwise, and all throughout scripture. So let's go to Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith. So we're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace. There we stand, rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We're justified by faith. And we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, that he made peace with God by the death of his cross on the cross. And by faith, we, we gain access into the grace of God. Okay, let's pick it back up in verse 8. But God commanded us love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Christ died for ungodly when we were yet without when we were yet without strength, without anything of ourselves. So when we were sinners, he died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, or saved from this wrath through him. Where is works? It should have said by being justified by, by his blood and our works. But it doesn't say that. For if we were, for when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So we're reconciled to God by death, not righteous living. Does not say that. We're reconciled by his death. It does not include righteous living. And not so not only so, but we also joy in God. We also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. So it's by Jesus Christ. It does not say by Jesus Christ through our works. Wherefore, as by one man 
for by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law of sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that have not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's progression, who is figure of him that is to come. But not as the offense to so all, but not as the fence, so also the free gift. For through the fence of one, many were made, many be dead. Much for the grace of God, the gift of the gift by grace, which by one man Jesus Christ abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is this, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is. Of many come with the, of many offenses unto justification. For by one man's offense death reigned by one. Much more by much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. So the gift of righteousness, we're gifted righteousness. Watch me say it says no. Bible says yes. Who are you gonna believe? The gift of righteousness, we are given righteousness, shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we are given righteousness through Jesus Christ, through faith in Jesus Christ. Therefore, by the fence, one of, by the, excuse me. Therefore, as by the fence of one, that is Adam, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteous of one, the free gift came from all men unto justification of life. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So the by the beings of one, that is Jesus Christ, so the beings of one shall many be made righteous. So it's not by our beings that we are saved. It's by the obedience of Jesus Christ, the obedience of dying on the cross, that we are made righteous. When we see this, that uh, Jesus came obedient unto the Father, even to the death, even the death of the cross. In Philippians 2, 6, 8, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, to be equal with God, but made himself a no reputation. He did not come as a, as a reputation of a king, but as a reputation of no reputation. He did not have any, he did not come with honor. Any that any money that should, uh, that, uh, that people should immediately respect him he being, but made himself so he made himself a no reputation but took upon the form of servant and was made in the likeness of men being found as in fashion as men he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the beating even to death of the cross so the obedience of death even death on the cross is what made us righteous. Therefore, in the um, 19, so the obedience of death has made us righteous. For the for as by one man's disobedience, Adam, Adam's disobedience, many were made sinners, but the obedience of one, so the obedience of Christ, uh, death on the cross, made us righteous. It's not by our obedience, it's by the obedience of Jesus Christ. The obedience of dying on the cross is what made us righteous. And us charged with righteousness. So, um, what is the commandments of Jesus Christ? It says in 
Now through 22, 36, 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it unto Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang on all the law and prophets. Romans 13, 8 to 10. Own no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath built the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear with false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling the law. It's not that we are fulfill the law, but we fulfill our law, the law by love that is produced by the Spirit in our walk. But the righteousness uh, of the law that the law requires was fulfilled in Jesus. But we are able to live righteously to fulfill what Jesus commanded us is to love God, to believe on his Son, or love him and or love him and love your neighbor. This love is fulfilling the law. It's contingent on love. That's obeying Jesus Christ. We're able to, to fulfill the law, which is love. It's the fruit of the spirit. Um, this was looking for Romans 8 there is therefore now no combination of them which are uh, in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit walking is being found in the spirit in Christ for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. The law which he could not do that was weak through the flesh, God sent him his own son. So the law, um, living righteously and when we fail is sacrifice to cover sins, but he condemned sin. He uh, was made sin up for us, taking away the condemnation. So own son in the likeness of sin pledge, and for sin he condemned sin and pledge, he took it away. Um, took it, the, the condemnation away. That the righteousness of the law might be filled in us. It's not that we do righteousness, but the righteousness in us. Not we are not fulfilled is okay. The righteousness of the law might be filled in us, not fulfilled. By us is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But beloved, we're not in the flesh, we're in the spirit. We we do not fall after the law, we are not carnal. We are spiritual, we we'll fall after the law of the gospel. Love, love, love God, leave in the record that God has uh, given us son. Love your neighbor. That the righteous of the, law, uh, of the law, love might be filled in us through the Spirit, by the Spirit. So, <laughs> he wants to uh, watch me do his perfect illustration, but uh, well. Once we're saved, to attain righteousness is by righteously living, living in righteousness, uh, living righteously. We're not charged with righteousness. We have to attain this righteousness to be saved, to stay saved. 
No, the righteousness is already fulfilled. And this righteousness of Christ that Christ fulfilled might be done, done in us who are in the spirit. And the spirit produces love, which is fulfillment of the law. So if we love, we have fulfilled the, the, the law has been filled in us by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So when we are saved, we have nothing righteous about us that could, uh, you know, we could offer Jesus Christ. We have our ways is not, what we see as right is not righteousness before God. It's not our standard. It's God's standard and judgment. It's living to uh, hit God's commandments is what counts for it right, as righteous living. Thus, Christ died to fulfill the requirement. And we, uh, so uh, the, he fulfilled, the, the, he took away, he took the punishment upon himself that we are not in condemnation when we are saved because there's no sacrifice. We do not practice animal sacrifice. So how can we uh, do anything about with condemnation. So where there's no condemnation, where there's no law, there's no transgression, where there's no condemnation. But the, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who are in, who walk out of spirit. So the, the spirit produces law, which is fulfillment of the law. So we are fulfilling the law to love God in our neighbor, but that is being produced by the Holy Spirit. So this law, commandments of Jesus Christ to love God and love the neighbor is in our walk. In, in our walk, we are counted righteousness we, when we um, when we uh, we allow this Holy Spirit to guide us to produce these, this, this in our law. So we're a charged righteousness before God because we are made right. We are forgiven. And it's not nothing of our own because we can't, we're not righteous. We have nothing to offer God. And it's definitely not the law. But it's by faith that we attain this righteousness. So this is why uh, why we say imputed that this righteousness that Christ filled be done, be done in us who believe in Jesus Christ. And we we are attributing this righteousness that Christ has fulfilled. The prime of the law. So, yes, it, we are imputed. Don't believe people that says we are not counted as righteous. This righteousness is, it comes from God, not from us. So, so remember that this righteousness comes from God, not from us. So, I hope this helps you. And remember, righteousness comes from God, and not from us. That anything that we have done, but. Uh, the, the righteous, righteous standard that uh, tickets us to, to live in heaven. So just remember that. Does not come from us, comes from God, from believing in Jesus Christ. So I hope this helps you. Thank you, take care. And don't, believe, don't fall after these teachers. Don't fall after teachers anymore because they are perverting uh, this truth. So I hope this helps you. Thank you and take care.